Добрый день, уважаемые студенты. Подскажите, пожалуйста, слышно ли нас? Пожалуйста, напишите в чате, слышите ли вы и видите ли вы. Все видно и слышно. Отлично. Большое вам спасибо. У нас были небольшие технические неполадки. Я думаю, что мы можем начинать. Uh, so I will skip to English. Good afternoon, dear uh, applicants. My name is Lyudmila Sergeyevna Vesilova, and I'm academic director of master program International Business in Asia Pacific region. So here on the slide, you could see my email. So in case if you will have any questions, so and you will forget to ask it today uh, using our chat. So you always can contact me via this email through the call application campaign so please don't be shy and if something is unclear so you always uh, can uh, visit our website and check the information or you can write to my email i would like to tell you a few words about like uh, our program and how it was the evolution of the program so the program was initially uh, created in 2017 and the name of the program was state society and economic development in modern asia then in 2018, so we renamed the program. So it has a name Business and Politics in Modern Asia. And the major of both of the companies was Asian and African Studies. But then, you know, like our program, we always try to be really applied, really close to business, because our main aim and goal to provide to our graduates, to our students, opportunity to work in real business with real partners from Asian countries. So from this year, we decided and we agreed to make amalgamation with master program international business. So this uh, study year for new study year, we create the master program international business in the Asia Pacific region. So the major or the specialization in management. And we are really welcome and really glad to invite you to apply your documents to our new program. So what are the features of the program? So our program is for two years, like all the master programs in Russia. So we have offline education, but please pay attention that classes will start not earlier than from 2.40. So it means that if you have part-time job or if you have your own research or some, you know, like uh, academic activities, so you will always have the first part of the day to do it. So the language is English, so this is why today we have our webinar in English, uh, and we will have this year two trajectories. Both trajectories will be applied. The first one is international business operation in Asia Pacific, and the second one is business innovations in Asia Pacific market. So what is the difference between these trajectories, right? So what are the features? So look on the screen, you could see that international business operations in Asia, this is like program more general about international business with emphasizes of management, the effectiveness of international operations of established business. So like on this trajectory, still it will be focused to Asia Pacific, but you know, it will be a more general one. So it can be interesting for students who changing, you know, specialization, maybe before you came from philology, history, Asian and African studies. So for you, this trajectory will be really good. The second one, it's more innovative, you know, it's more about digital transformation, about new business model, e-commerce, entrepreneurship, also with focus to Asia Pacific region. So normally we encourage students uh, in September when you will be admitted to the program to choose which exactly trajectory you would like to participate. But please don't worry if at some moment you will decide that you need like to choose another trajectory during the whole study year, you will have chance to make these changes. So this is why like just now you just need to think which trajectory is the most interesting for you. And one more like tips please write about it in your motivation letter because for us it will be very valuable to understand so what of trajectory is interesting for you uh, so this year uh, we have 35 uh, state-founded places for Russian students and also we have 10 self-founded places for Russian students also as you could see 20 places will be for foreigners and uh, 12 for self-founded places for foreigners so as you can understand almost 40% of students on the program are foreigners. So this is why, of course, um, a good level of English uh, will be essential part of your study because you need to understand professors, you need to talk with your classmates. 
here in the HEC we have a lot of teamwork, a lot of group work. So this is why, of course, you need to be sure in your level of English language. So this is why we are asking for certificates or for some proof of your at least B2 level. So how you should identify that this program is for you? So here we provided you some points. If you are interested in developing business, political and cultural relations with such countries as China, Japan, India, South Korea, so this program is for you. If you would like to know more about economic management and political trends in Russia in the world, this program is for you. If you always were curious about cross-cultural management, about e-commerce development, about improving communication skills, especially with Asian partners, our program is also for you. So actually, we will try during these two years of education, help you to get skills, to create and implement new business models of companies, and of course, try to know how to react to new global challenges and business digitalization. What is very important, this is, uh, it will be very interesting for those of you who are not from the HEC. In HEC, we provide a great number of elective courses. So what does it mean? We have one standard study plan, but inside study plan, you will have several selective courses. So this is why at the end of the education, you and your classmates, in fact, will have totally different subjects in your diploma. And it means that you will not have competition on labor market because, in fact, you had different knowledge. And, of course, we have very interesting uh, part of our education process, which is called MAGA LEGO. MAGA LEGO, this is an opportunity for the HEC students to receive some additional competences. For example, our program is about management. But maybe, you know, you always were interested in some kind of like uh, philology, philosophy. Maybe you wanted to know more about teaching process or like uh, something about like um, visualization. So in uh, this part of Magalega, you will be able to choose Elsa several courses, which will provide you some additional competences, which are not uh, related to uh, management. What else we have? Uh, sorry, in HEC we have a number of other opportunities. We have edu additional education, so you will be able to learn some additional foreign languages. For our program, and this is a part of our like study plan, you will be able to study Chinese language. So actually, we provide you opportunity to study Chinese language from the beginning, and also opportunity to study business Chinese language if your level of Chinese higher than HSK four. Uh, we consider that uh, Chinese language is one of the most like important now, the most attractive now for the students. So this is why we like make focus exactly on English language. Also, we have a business track. So in the HEC, we have business incubator. We have international competition of startup projects. We have different case championships. So if you are really interested in business and entrepreneurship, so HEC and our program will be able to help you. Of course, we also always support students who are interested to stay with us in academia and maybe to become a researcher or a professor. So this is why exactly for you, we have a number of different project activities. So like annually, we have more than like 170 projects. We have opportunities to participate in students' exhibitions. Also, of course, we provide opportunity to work as assistants of professor uh, in research laboratories or in different scientific centers. As I told at the beginning, the most important for us, you know, to provide you knowledge, which you will be able to use during your work. So for, for us, the most important to give you something valuable, something useful. So essential part of our master program is internship. Normally, we have internship during the second year of education, right? So like from uh, January to February for two or three months, uh, depending on trajectory. And here you could see where you could go for, for internship. Large state corporations, consulting companies, business support companies, think tanks, media, ministries, business incubators and startups and so on. Why you should do it? Because, you know, internship, it's really good way and opportunity to try yourself in business activity and to understand if you're really interested in it or not. And the best part of it that, you know, like almost 70% of our students after internship received job, job offers. 
And actually, this is the one which we are proud of, because for us, it's very important that after graduation, our students can easily find a job place. So here on the slide, you could see just some of our partners. And you know, just last week, we have HEC Career Week. You could check it on the website of HEC or HEC Career Center. So annually, the number of our partners just grow. And of course, uh, you will be able to find like partner which will be suitable exactly for you. What is else important? Because our program name is international business, especially in the Asia Pacific region. Of course, we consider that international mobility is also very initial, very, you know, compulsory part of your education. So this is why for all MA students, we provide opportunity to participate in mobility exchange. So for one semester or maximum for two, you can go for mobility to another universities. So like some of the students are worried, so which universities are open to us now? And you could see that number of universities from Asia, from China, from Indonesia, from uh, Japan, from India, and uh, else a number of universities in Europe are open to our students. So like we all have like working agreements. And if you are interested in international mobility, so you will be able to apply to these exchange programs. Normally, the first year of education is the most active for our students. You will have a lot of classes, you will study a lot, you will try, you know, to understand the HEC system, how it works. So, like, we encourage students to apply to international mobility during first and second model of the second year of education. So, first year you study here in St. Petersburg in HEC with us, and on the second year for one semester, normally you should go abroad. And I would like to say that almost all students who apply for mobility programs uh, have chance uh, to go and study abroad. And now we are coming to most useful part, you know, of our today's webinar. So about entrance tests, and I will try to provide you, you know, some tips how you can successfully apply to our program. So first of all, please pay attention to deadlines from 19th June to 25th July. So we will have uh, the officially the admission campaign. So please don't forget uh, using like uh, our website to apply your portfolio and also to pass English test or just provide us English, uh, English language certificate. This year we have uh, some uh, new points. Uh, you can pass ELSA lingua test. Lingua test is a unified inter-campus exam in English. Uh, so, like, you will be able uh, to pass it, but the most important is that one applicant has only one attempt. But, you know, it's also one additional way how you can pass it. For example, you can try to pass Lingua test now if you receive certificate, so just download your certificate inside your portfolio. If for some reasons you failed, so you will have opportunity to pass a qualification English exam in uh, HEC a little bit later when we will have the period of application. Uh, so normally the schedule of entrance examination is established no later than June 1st. So this is why quite soon you will have all the information. So Elsa, I encourage you to visit the uh, website of LinguaTest. So there you have a lot of information and Elsa, you will find a schedule for this exam. Now let's go to portfolio part and like normally students have a lot of questions here. So please, if you have questions, just use your our chat and write them down. So I will try to answer every question. Let's start from the common part. First, what is important? Please pay attention, English language everywhere. We are English taught program and we have English uh, speaking professors and different professors will check your portfolio. So this is why it is compulsory that your documents to be in English. Because sometimes students, you know, just forgot about it and then they sent us CV in Russian. Unfortunately, if we receive documents in Russian, it doesn't matter if it is CV or motivation letter, we are not able to provide any grades for this part of portfolio. So you will receive zero, even if your motivation letter is just perfect. So please pay attention to English language. So common part consists of CV, motivation letter, and letter of recommendation. Letter of recommendation should be from your scientific supervisor or from professor from university or from the dean 
of the faculty where you studied. So like normal students ask, what to do if like my professor didn't want to provide me recommendation letter in Russian language? So first of all, you can translate recommendation letter in English and provide to your professor asking to uh, sign it. Or you can just like after uh, signing the Russian version, just provide for us translated English version of this recommendation letter. But of course, better to persuade your professor that for English taught program, you need like recommendation letter in English. Then we have basic part. This is your diploma. It can be bachelor or specialist. So please be sure that your scans of a good quality because inside your scan we also checking some information, right? So this is why we need to see really clear. So what was the major? What was the subjects? What was your grade, for example, for English language and so on? Else we will need your diploma implement and uh, a little bit later we will have interview in English. So what about creative part? So here again, the first one, bachelor says it's abstract in English or scientific essay. Uh, I received a lot of questions. So what to do, for example, if my bachelor thesis was not about international business, but was about engineering or about law? It's okay. So first of all, you can, in such case, just write scientific essay uh, in the documents, which you can find on our website, we provide a lot of different topics if you can't just, you know, create your own. Or you just can write scientific essay on the topic you are interested in, because for us, it's very important to see how you can, using English, write some, you know, academic uh, works. So this is why it's very important to us receive uh, your bachelor thesis abstract or scientific essay. Of course, you need to provide all the references inside the text, and of course, it must be uh, good looking. So the next one, this is documents confirming knowledge of English language. And here you could see TOEFL, IELTS and Cambridge. Of course, we know that nowadays it's quite difficult for students received these exams. In such case, again, uh, let's move to the previous slide. I recommend you in such case use lingua tests. So lingua tests, it can be alternative. Uh, for TOEFL, IELTS, and Cambridge. So you can pass it and uh, provide us the results. Unfortunately, we will not be able to receive as documents confirming knowledge of English language recommendations from university or from study office or some, you know, short-term trips or some certificates from English, English language schools. No, we need just, you know, like certified international certificates or lingua test results. Elsa, uh, if you have certificates confirming knowledge of Asian language, it also will be valuable for us because you will receive some additional points for it. So if you have any certificates of Chinese, Korean, Japanese language, so please don't forget to attach it. Then, of course, we will be really glad uh, to see information if you participated in mobility programs. Maybe you study abroad, maybe you participate in exchange, but please pay attention that if you want to receive additional points for study abroad, you need to stay abroad one or more semester. So unfortunately, if you just, you know, went for summer school or for one or two months, we will not be able to provide you additional points. But if you went abroad at least one semester, of course, we will be glad to provide you additional points. Then, if you have any diplomas of competitions and other competitions, I understand, of course, scientific competitions, uh, certificates of participation in winter and summer schools, or some professional certificates, please provide it to us. What you shouldn't provide to us? Uh, like some of the students sometimes send me their driving license, their like certificates of best dancer of 2020, or like, you know, some uh, certificates and diplomas of some school competitions. No, we don't need it. Of course, when we talk about additional diplomas, we talk about some academic, maybe conferences, maybe case championships or something related, you know, to academic sphere. So if you have it, so please attach it. If you don't have it, so please <laughs> don't provide it to us. And of course, if you participated in conferences and if you have existing publications, it will be really glad and good if you will provide it to us. But please pay attention that all publications will be checked. So we really don't recommend to students 
published the articles in some journals where you can pay for publication. We have the list of these journals and it can be really easy checked. So we can go to website and if we see that on the website it is says that, you know, like we can publish your article for like, I don't know, three, five thousand troubles. So of course, automatically this publication will be deleted from your portfolio. You will receive zero and also, of course, it will have more negative impact than positive. So this is why if before you have this, you know, previous experience that for some reason you published in such journal so better not to attach this publication in such journal to your portfolio but if you of course was published in some your thesis in some conferences or good publications in some good journal so why not what is important for you so please look on the screen here you could see the website uh, address right uh, the page address where you could see in russian language a really clear all the criteria for portfolio so you could see that we try to be you know very precise so we explain what is cv what is motivation letter and elsa please pay attention this document consists not of three pages but it have more pages and if you could see on the right side of the slide we have a very clear explanation to every chapter for example motivation letter and in motivation letters there is a very clear explanation what we would like to see in motivation letter what questions must be covered in motivation letter so the same is about your scientific essay about the abstract of ba thesis and so on of course one of the most part most important part of uh, portfolio this is interview and a lot of students worry about it so please please first of all don't worry we have a very friendly atmosphere and our interviews will be in online and in offline format so it will be uh, very you know useful and comfortable for students from st petersburg and from other regions so you don't shouldn't be worried secondly normally we ask quite the same questions so what is your motivation why you decided to apply exactly to our program why it is exactly hc in st petersburg how do you think our program can help you so what uh, would you like to research during your master studies what could be the possible topic of your ma thesis and so on so actually the questions are some basic and actually we provide them also in these documents which you could see on the slide so just calm down prepare yourself and just to be sure that our program is exactly for you and that it is really will be able to help you with your future career plans. So what are the peculiarities of the application procedure for this year? This year, every applicant has right to submit for two programs. For example, you are interested in our program and program finance. So priorities between programs are determined when submitting documents so for example you submit documents you write that you are interested in two master programs but you should also identify which program is on the first place for you and which on the second this is very important because you know on every program we will have passing score and of course uh, we will see for whom our program in is in the first priority so this priority can be changed until 25th july but after it, it will be impossible to change. So if you, for example, will put the first priority finance and our just the second priority, and if you will pass of the like scores for finance, so you will lose the place in our program. The next one. So admission, okay, here it said admission to state founded places uh, um, uh, and places at the expense of the HEC is carried out according to the priorities indicated by the applicant in the application. And of course, like admission to budget places only if the admission committee has the original document on education. So this is why it's also very, very important that you stay in touch with us during the whole application period and you must be sure that if you will be admitted to the program you will have time 
to come to St. Petersburg or at least to send your documents to St. Petersburg. Because last year we have different cases when, you know, students just came at last minute and they were like flying from Kazan to, to come uh, at exact time to St. Petersburg because like student was not sure that she will be admitted. So please pay attention to it. And you should know that, of course, we need your original documents. Without it, your enrollment will be impossible. So this is why better when you provide application please write several contact telephones for example it can be cell phone of your mother and yours so in case if you for some reason will be not available we can call to some of your parents right so we always need to keep in touch because sometimes we have different questions for documents or maybe you will have some problems with online connection to interview so of course we need your contacts uh, to be uh, to be in touch and to solve issues really fast. Uh, so here on the slide, you could see one more time my email. Uh, so I'm answer quite fast, um, maximum three working days. So if you have any questions, if you need any comments or something, so please don't be shy. I'm quite friendly and I'm ready to open you. Also, of course, we have uh, official website where we published a lot of information. And also here you could see QR code and uh, link to our VK group. So if you're interested in programs, so I really encourage you uh, to be the part of our VK group. So there we publish a lot of different interviews with students, some interesting materials from uh, HCE. So it can be really interesting for you. Also, of course, uh, I'm providing here you a link for uh, information for the admission criteria uh, for Russian and foreign students. So, like, if you are interested or if you still have some questions, you always can uh, check this link and find all the important information. I think that this is all for today. But as I told you, I'm always ready to your questions. If you have the questions, please write it in chat and I will try to answer it. So thank you for your attention. Uh, yes, we have some questions. Uh, could you please push the button? Наверху, где вопросы? Не в чате, а вопросы, да. Левее. Uh, okay, uh, so like Vitaly asking, what kind of lingua test should I choose, academic or business? You need to choose academic, of course. Elsa, Vitaly, another question. Will I get additional points for articles in the sphere of engineering? Yes, actually, Vitaly, for us, it doesn't matter what is the sphere of your previous publication, because we understand that all of our applicants could have different background. Some can be from history, from engineering, or from, like, philology. So the most important that you were such a great student that you were able to publish your article in good journal. So this is why, of course, we will provide you additional points for these publications. More questions? Um, uh, Daria, yeah, thank you for coming today. Yes. Okay, uh, so if everything was clear, so thank you so much uh, to staying with us. Uh, so again, you always can reach me via email or you can write in our VK group. Also there we can answer your questions. And of course, please don't hesitate to visit our website. There we have a lot of useful information. So in any case, we are waiting for your application and we hope that the whole you know, application procedure will be really easy for you. Uh, and our colleagues, our managers are always like open uh, to support and to help you to any, with any questions. So thank you and have a good day.
Uh, Daria, I'm sorry, we just now saw your question. So Daria was asking about the scholarship during uh, exchange period. Uh, yes, Daria, you are totally right. So nowadays Erasmus uh, doesn't operate in Russia, so it is not possible to receive uh, Erasmus scholarship. But still, if you talk about Asian countries, for example, about China or India or Japan, you still have opportunity to apply to governmental scholarship of the PRC, India or Japan. So normally, like our like partners from Asian countries, they provide such scholarship for students. But you know, like uh, HEC as a university, else tried always to provide some financial help to students. So let's see what will be next year. Of course, from our side, we will try to do our best. What we can guarantee is that your education in foreign university will be for free. And also most of our partners provide free dormitories. So in fact, you need to pay just for, uh, for flight tickets and for your daily, daily needs. So of course we understand that it can be uh, difficult, but again, uh, like exchange and mobility programs, it's not compulsory, it's just some opportunity which we provide. And of course we will try if uh, Erasmus again will be with us, of course we will try to provide all the possible opportunities to all of our students. <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> Okay, uh, for now, one more time. Do we have more questions? You can write it in chat, not just in questions, so not to, to, to lose somebody's questions. Uh, yes, Daria is asking to for wait for one minute. Okay, Daria, you have more questions? So your, your questions will be like different. So you can ask about like study process. Uh, okay, about uh, volunteering. You have a question about volunteering. Uh, yes, Daria, but what do, what do you mean? So do you have any clubs, volunteering clubs or volunteering activities? Uh, yes, we have it. So we have different projects. And of course, if you are interested in volunteering uh, activities, so you also can uh, like inspire other students to have your own club or participate in some social programs. So actually we have some disciplines uh, connected with social entrepreneurship and of course it will be possible to have some kind of research activity or applied projects uh, about volunteering. Uh, is it possible to take part in international conference uh, uh, something like this? Yes, of course, <laughs> you know, like, of course, we, we're really open and we always support our students if you are active, if you would like to participate in conference, of course, we will support you. So normally, I could say for international conference, which, uh, which are held in Russia, we also provide some financial support to students. For example, some of our students go to Moscow, to Kazan, and we help them, so we pay for accommodation and for tickets. Uh, so, of course, if it will be international conference somewhere in China or in Japan, so we will need to discuss what it will be the amount of financial support that you need. But normally, of course, if you are outstanding student, if you are active, of course, again, we will do our best uh, to support you because it is also, you know, from our side, it's our interest, it's our prestige and proud that our students were admitted to international conferences. So we will try to support you. I hope I answered your question, Daria. <laughs> yes, it also will be great if such active students will be the part of our program. Uh, do we have more questions? Okay. Uh, if no, so finally, uh, thank you so much for coming today. One more time, if you have any questions, if after webinar like appeared that you just you know forgot to ask something, just contact me via email or in our VK group, and I'm always here to support you. So have a good day and waiting you during the application process. See you on the interview. Bye bye. <laughs>